Are you a first time home buyer or maybe you've owned a home in the past but you're just not familiar and things have changed a lot? In today's video, we're gonna make this process easy for you. Nine steps on what it takes to buy a home in Phoenix all the way from getting pre-approved through looking at homes and what specific order do you need to use for buying a home in Phoenix. We're gonna walk through all those and simplify it in this video, stick around. Unless you've been living under a rock recently, you know the interest rates are on the high side and inventory is quite low, making it this slowdown process in the housing market here in Phoenix and across the country. A lot of the sellers are waiting out the market a little bit and they don't really want to sell their house if they have a 2-3% interest rate and get into an 8% interest rate. The payments are quite different, obviously, there. And then the buyers are waiting it out, hoping the, the interest rates come down. And when they do come down, it's going to create this high, the higher demand. The inventory is going to be even harder, which drives the prices up. So it's this game going on. But we're going to walk through the nine steps, like I mentioned, of getting the home loan and getting to that next home, the, what that process looks like. If you're not familiar, if you're a first time home buyer, maybe you're in that apartment and you want to get into the market, or maybe you've had owned a home before and you want to clarify the process, make it a little bit easier and need a little help along the way. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment on any questions you have, reach out to me, phone, email, text, all the stuff, and I will help you walk through the whole process like I did when I moved down here to the Phoenix area from Minnesota. <coughs> Step number one is taking a realistic look at where you're at right now. A lot of times you want to get into that house and maybe you qualify for the house and you really want, you have that idea in mind of where you want to live, all that sort of thing, but maybe the timing isn't right. Maybe you're stretching yourself a little bit too much or you're playing a little bit safe and you've been paying rent for a while. You know what you're getting there. You know what you don't need to account for all those other maintenance things that might come up with a house and maybe it's you're playing it safe, but you want to get that equity. So you want to get back into the house. You might want to stretch yourself just a little bit as well and you're going to be seeing a little bit more fixed payments on a mortgage too. So there's also the advantages there, but look at your savings, look at your retirement, look at, do you have, is it just you paying for the mortgage or do you have a significant other or you have maybe even a roommate option? So just take a full understanding of what it's looking like realistically for you as you start this process. And then from that, we'll move into step number two. <coughs> step number two is how much can you afford? It's the magical question. Oh, I want to have everything in this new house. I want to have 17 bedrooms and six pools and two maid uh, quarters. That's sometimes how you might want to go into that. That's a little bit exaggeration, obviously, but sometimes not. Is come up with an idea of what you're looking at, but what is that payment you can afford? Maybe take what you're paying now in rent and stretch a little bit or because you you will be gaining tax advantages and you'll have more of a fixed payment. It won't really be going up unless or maybe your taxes change just slightly, that sort of thing. But then you have a ballpark of about 25% of your take home is what you can plan on for your mortgage payment. That's just a ballpark. You don't want to be house poor and just to pay the mortgage and you can't put any furniture in it. You got, you see, that's, that's no fun either. So then you also want to look at your retirement and college savings and different maintenance things that might come up with a house. You need tree trimming, plumbing, you have to fix up a certain room, carpet, floors, do you have to redo the kitchen or do you need some cosmetic updates? There are things in the home that do come up, but if you plan for it and you have a little bit of a, a fund to plan for and you're not going to be too surprised, then obviously you're feeling pretty good about this and you're ready to go to step number three. Step number three is one of those steps that can sometimes be overlooked when you're new to this process, but trust me, especially when a high demand market, you, you can't skip this step. And if you go out starting to look at homes and you really find that home you really like and you want to make an offer, timing is very critical. You won't be, you won't get the home because someone else will have their pre-approval letter. They'll have all this stuff lined up and they'll move in and they'll get the house. So the pre-approval process is just working with your lender, making sure you have approval of what you qualify for the loan. So you also know how much you can realistically go out and look for that home. Is it 500, 400, 700, 2 million, whatever it is. 
I'm sure you have a pretty good idea to start from. There's a lot of different things online, but if you do not have a lender, I have several options I can connect you with. And there's also some common myths as well that you have to put 20% down or all these sort of things. And there's a lot of different loans, some as low as 3%, some even have grants and other funding that is available that can even help with closing costs. And so I would not assume all these other things. If you have a lot of questions about, I don't know if I can afford that or talk with a lender and they can answer all those questions for you. And the other one that comes up a lot is just um, the closing costs and it gets very confusing. So you want to break that down again, talk with the lender and there's a lot of options for you and they have some things that might even surprise you to free up some money. And you also have in this market, you have negotiation power. Since the market's tight, you might be able to have the seller contribute to paying down your mortgage rate, some of those sort of things. So a lot of great options out there. And by far the most important is finding a real estate agent that can help you through the process. And I'm not gonna even say anything, I'll make a self, <laughs> obviously I gotta have a little fun with this, right? Is finding an agent that really is someone that fits your personality style, understands what your needs are, and is available. So communication is always key with everything in life. And you want to work with someone that is going to be there to listen and has that time to go out, show you the homes, do some research for you, and be able to negotiate for you as well. All those things that you just don't think about that are real key in helping you get that transaction closed and moving into that next house. You found the great home, you wanna put the offer in, maybe even lost a few along the way, and that just creates this additional clarity is from what I've seen in patterns, even with myself, is you think you know what you want, you maybe put the offer in, you don't know the market, and all of a sudden someone swoops in underneath, and that's what I'm here for as well, to help you understand the timing and all those other things that go with it. You find the house, and you see yourself in it, you try to keep the emotional value at a minimum because you wanna take that away as much as you can. And it's just a home to begin with and you will make it your own, but it's very important to try to keep the emotional value out as much as you can while you go through this process. And that's where the independent realtor agent like myself can be that that's normal voice for you and the calming voice and the one that can just take control and have you worry about your own stress and try to control that and they can take care of all the, the little things in the negotiation to make sure that the offer goes through and all the little things that go with it that we can negotiate that you may not even realize. Then we have the fun part as I like to look at this is the house hunting, driving around, walking through homes and just narrowing down the search. And I've seen the trends and it can vary for everyone. Sometimes you know you need exactly this many bedrooms, you would pool, no pool, this area, this location, you know all that, maybe one story, two story, whatever it is, but some, it's not super common. And sometimes you can start with a too broad of a search and it's just too much. And you, you're really gonna, it's gonna take a lot longer to narrow that down. But a lot of times when you start searching, you start to answer those questions and you start to see what the demand is as well, is if the demand is super tight, you're gonna need to make quicker decisions or you're gonna lose things, lose homes. But if you know what you want and you strike on it quickly, and maybe you're willing to bend on a few things if you have a lower mar lower um, budget. And it's just a matter of looking through those homes with your agent and <laughs> trying to figure out what best works for you and then you move into the offer. You found the great home, you wanna put the offer in, maybe even lost a few along the way. And that just creates this additional clarity is from what I've seen in patterns, even with myself, is you think you know what you want, you maybe put the offer in, you don't know the market, and all of a sudden someone swoops in underneath. And that's what I'm here for as well, to help you understand the timing and all those other things that go with it. You find the house and you see yourself in it, you try to keep the emotional value at a minimum because you wanna take that away as much as you can. And it's just a home to begin with, and you will make it your own, but it's very important to try to keep the emotional value out as much as you can while you go through this process. And that's where the independent realtor agent like myself can be that that's normal voice for you and the calming voice and the one that can just take control and have you worry about your own stress and try to control that and, he, and they can take care of all the, the little things in the negotiation to make sure that the offer goes through 
and all the little things that go with it that you, we can negotiate that you may not even realize. Then we have the home inspection and the appraisal steps that all go into this home buying process. And the standard is 10 days for the home inspection to have the inspection or the inspector come in, walks through the house, they give you a great report of all the different things, pretty detailed. And then you can look at that and say, well, there's foundation issues or there's something wrong with the air conditioner that's pretty major. Or, you know, it could be numerous different things or it could just be minor things, which is pretty standard along the way especially if the age of the home is quite old, you'll just, you'll expect to have a lot of different things going on with that house. Then once you have the appraisal and you negotiate with the seller, do you want them to make some concessions towards those costs? Just really depends on the supply and demand, the timing and how much you want the house and how much you want to negotiate. But it also depends on the seller's incentive to sell and how quickly they want to move out how, and the price of the home starting. All those things exactly go into this equation. So it's, it, again, it's a delicate balance. There's a lot of steps involved. So you really want to make sure you have someone on your side that's really helping you work through this process and help reduce that stress and get some clarity and then get you in the home, obviously. After, after you've worked out the home inspection and appraisal and all that has come through and it's pretty clean and you maybe have a couple outstanding items as far as repair go, repairs go, maybe you need to fix a couple things that you were going to do yourself or maybe the seller just you made an agreement that uh, they're going to sign off on everything is, is fine you're okay with it and you're going to take care of those items when you move in there's a lot of that back and forth and negotiation that can happen but those are just the fine final little details and then you'll have a final walkthrough right a couple days before you close you walk through the house you take a good look at making sure there's no huge issues there's no rainstorm that flew into the house or the roof collapsed or something like that before you close and if everything all looks great then you can move forward to the next step of the final piece the most exciting part is the closing and getting your keys and all that sort of thing and last you'll have the closing where you finalize and sign a lot of paperwork a lot of documents and it can get overwhelming so just make sure you ask a lot of questions through the process to make sure if there's something you don't fully understand they'll explain it to you and walk through everything so it's not like you're just signing your life away with no idea what you're signing. So they'll help you through that process. And then after you're through with that and all the different monetary funds are transferred and everyone is paid, then after the, in Arizona, after the, the deed is recorded with the county, then you'll get your keys and you can bring the truck around and start moving things in, which is completing the process and then you're in your new home. And that's the process. Sounds pretty easy, right? It's not too bad, but just like anything, if you break it down into smaller chunks, it's not that difficult. And if you have a couple people that you can rely on along the way, the loan officer, the real estate agent, I can't help it. You have all those little pieces along the way just to make that a little bit easier. One of the things that came to mind as I was walking through this is also on your credit score, if you know you have a couple blemishes on there, Make sure to clean that up as best you can before you start all this process and do not buy any large items. Don't open up any new credit as you're getting close or through this whole escrow process because that will raise flags and that will create a potential problem with closing your loan. You do not want that. If you're looking to relocate to the Phoenix area or maybe even you're in the area now and you wanna to move to a different area of town or different neighborhood, I would love to help you with that process. Just leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel because I have all kinds of videos covering different neighborhoods and spotlighting communities and walking through all those common questions that you have to help the journey make it, make it that much easier. So call, email, text. I'm here to help and I'm looking forward to helping you through the process.